Welcome back to Small Caps. Today, I'm speaking with Dr. Roger Aston. He is the chairman and CEO of Farmost. Now, Farmost, ASX code PAA, is ASX listed, and they are focused on developing a drug called Monty, Pente Monty Panel. Pantel. I can never get it right, Roger, but we'll get there. Um, it's a drug for veterinary cancer, uh, as well as human cancer. But more importantly, what we're going to talk about today is a number of things but it's also the big elephant in the room. It can be used for COVID. Roger, welcome to the program. Great to see you. Pleasure to be here, Kerry. And uh, as you say, I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about Monopantel and uh, uh, the option which we uh, uh, have had with the company and also uh, the diverse applications of the drug that uh, we've been working on. Well, let's start with that, actually, Roger, if we could, because there was an announcement released that the option with Elanco Animal Health, uh, they've decided that they're not going to proceed with the exercise of the option to develop this particular drug for veterinary cancers. Now, what does that mean for the company at this stage? Well, I, I can speak to that. And before I kick off, I might first say that Elanco have been a first class option partner. And as always, if the relationship is a good one, one has always got the opportunity to knock on the door again when data has progressed further. And uh, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. How good is the, how good is the data and how convincing is the data? Um, we are, of course, disappointed by their decision not to proceed with the option. However, in some way, I think it won't affect our commercialization strategy and certainly not the final outcome with this particular product. Um, so there's a number of factors that I suppose lead me to the conclusion that it's not entirely a bad thing what has happened. Firstly, regarding the data we presented to them, we showed them that monopantel, when used at the right dose, can show exceptional uh, tumor regression in canines. They're interested in, they're a vet company, they're interested in canine cancer. Canines are part of the family these days. People spend money on them, especially when they have cancer. And we have said to the market uh, in, in recent times that um, we need to optimize the dose of the drug that we've been using, which as yet we haven't done. And we think that once we've optimized it, more canines will show uh, high degrees of regression of tumors, which is really what you want, and um, less, say, with induction of stable disease. So there's three things, either the drug doesn't work very well in one or two percent or 10 percent of the dogs. Most of the dogs showed some stability of disease. In other words, you didn't regress the tumors, but they stopped growing. And we had one particular dog where 60 percent of the tumors regress or 60 percent regression of tumors was achieved and one tumor completely disappeared, which is really what we want to show in a number of animals and if we can show that then I think we're back on the rails and uh, potentially can negotiate a much better deal for the company than we could with just one flagship dog showing regression. So it's all about the data uh, at the end of the day and we're already um, even before the uh, option agreement was declined by uh, Elanco um, we'd already started a compassionate use program uh, with canines and the owner takes the product home and gives the dog uh, x tub tablets per day depending on the weight and size of the dog and so on so um, in summary we, we've given the vet partner an account of the optimization requirements and they felt they wanted to decline at this stage but as i said the door's always open if you get the results to go back but I, think I also that, think uh, Roger, other sorry, fact. Roger, if I could just interrupt you for a moment, but Elenco uh, have also recently purchased Bayer in a, in a deal which is rather huge. So uh, I guess it's really no surprise that pot potentially this is not top of their list at the moment. They're, they're, they're doing a, a, a big buy at the moment. So their focus is in other directions. I don't think it's a, a slight on what you're doing. It's just a different direction that they're heading in at the moment. That's absolutely right, Kerry. I, I also suspect 
that the uh, vet pharma company has their hands full mm. with the recent uh, acquisition of Bayer Animal Health. It's a, it was a multi-billion dollar uh, purchase, which um, and that's according to the press, which I'm sure is correct. And really, when you have two multi-billion dollar companies trying to integrate, yeah. uh, you find that uh, the focus changes. And I've been in that position myself when I was at Welcome in London and uh, that merged with Glaxo, which is uh, one of the biggest uh, pharmaceutical companies. And of course, people are running around because it, typically you do these deals to get more leverage out of the, more bang for the buck out of the products. In other words, you rationalize. So most people will be focusing now on the, on the new integrated company. These integrations can take years to complete. And um, I suspect perhaps quite rightly that uh, Elanco want to focus on that uh, as their priority. And again, if our results come out as we expect they will do, to tell us at the right dose of drug, you get uh, a much more profound tumor regression. We think it will raise their eyebrows and they will start talking to us again. But remember, we still have the option to go to one or two of the other major companies. In fact, I can add that um, during the period when we had the option with Alanco, we were approached by a US company as to whether we wanted to work with them. And of course, we had to decline. We said we've got an exclusive option with a partner who's very good. And um, we may pick up on some of these historic contacts or interests in Pharmos. Yeah, um, because that, that's so, the whole, so Roger, that's the whole thing, isn't it? Because um, one door closes, but actually multiple doors can now be opened to Pharmos to, to progress this and potentially bring it, would it potentially bring you the option to fast forward it a little bit? Well, it does. And it also gives us the option to know what our product is worth with greater accuracy. In other words, if you've got a product that's, say, effective at uh, giving tumor regression in 25% of dogs, that has a very different value than a product that is operational with 75% of dogs. So what uh, the um, vet pharma's decision has done for us is to allow us to um, get more data to move down that valuation pathway. So I don't see it from a commercialization perspective as a, as a particularly big negative because we believe that the potential is there for the product to perform. Well, um, w uh, what's the status of the IP? Because I think, um, weren't Elanco um, supplying the tablets? Yes, Elanco very kindly provided 25 kilograms of the drug which we, um, uh, at our expense, we converted into tablets, uh, not all of it, but most of it. And that has been used in the current trial and we have enough tablets to continue the work. And I believe that Elanco are happy for us to continue with the work. And of course, this is why the relationship is good. We would certainly talk to them again as a priority if we did get uh, what we're expecting to get, i.e. A, a much higher percentage of canines showing benefit. Um, so um, as, as regards the patents themselves, <coughs> sorry, as regards the patents themselves, the original drug patents are owned by Elanco and uh, we have their agreement to continue working with canines. We actually have our own patents for cancer and viral diseases and uh, it's a whole suite of patents. Ours have got about 15 to 20 years to, uh, to run in terms of protection. Whereas, um, and this is partly our, uh, our strategy, the Elanco patents will be starting to expire next year with uh, expiration sort of by the mid twenties, shall we say, um, uh, over time. And of course that money from the options um, enabled us to um, increase the, the bank account um, and as a result of that, we have no urgency to raise capital. So we're, we're pretty well funded now to go, go through the next stage of uh, continuing with the canine trial, uh, 
achieving uh, regression in more dogs and also pursuing our uh, studies with COVID-19, which is another aspect of the program. Yeah, and I, I note that, that you had some very good COVID, COVID's what everyone's talking about at the moment, the COVID-19 uh, results were announced this morning. Um, are there any uh, plans for a human trial in, the, in that area? Because that's, that's big news at the moment. Well, of course it is. And uh, as we were talking before we went on air, so as to put it, uh, there is now a global urgency to find solutions. We all want to have a vaccine out there. We all want to get back to our normal lives and um, a vaccine would potentially, a good vaccine would potentially achieve that. However, having said that, there's still many, many people in hospitals and in intensive care units where a vaccine will be uh, of not much use. Uh, you need to have a vaccine before you get the disease, not when you're in intensive care. Hmm. Uh, and as such, we, we've been looking at Monopanto as a potential um, agent to prevent uh, viral replication in various model systems. We've used two organizations one of them is the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute of Medical Research, which is a globally known uh, institute in Melbourne. And of course, we've also gone commercial to a contractor who can do viral proliferation analysis. And both of them have come back and said the drug is potent and we're getting over 90% inhibition of um, uh, viral load. And uh, the next steps for us is to present this data to centers who have two things. One, uh, patients, of course, but secondly, we're looking for people who can do the preclinical studies that are required. Uh, there's a program where you use tissues from people who've passed away or uh, people's lungs and where you can look at a, an infection model in actual human tissues. And we've had a couple of people in uh, Europe and the US put their hand up to say, yes, we can do this kind of work as a uh, as a preclinical um, study and this gives much more confidence as to how to use the drug at the end of the day when do you actually give it to the patient when they arrive at the hospital do you, or do you do it once they get in the disease more serious more seriously and they're about to go into intensive care uh, or you know many drugs are now looked at as intensive care drugs such as dexamethasone and so on so um we're progressing well, and uh, I think the data we have had, to quote the people who have been doing the work, are, are quite remarkable. So um, fingers crossed. But you you mentioned before it was the inhibition of the viral load, and I thought that was pretty interesting because would that be not just for COVID? Could that be um, something that could be accessed to other viruses across the spectrum, so to speak? Well, that's a good observation, and indeed, uh, we haven't tested other viruses, but if it is an antiviral, uh, it's important to, to test it. And of course, there's dozens of viral diseases in the world, some of them more serious, like e e Ebola, uh, you remember that uh, period. And, um, and of course, some of the products that were used in Ebola have been tested for COVID. There's only one product at the moment that is approved. Approved, I think by the FDA and that's remdesivir which is an antiviral it inhibits viral replication um, but we're doing that as well uh, monopantil has been shown to inhibit the replication of the virus in both human cells and monkey cells grown in culture so you grow the cells and you pop in the drug and the virus and you, you see if you can prevent the virus from infecting and replicating in this, those cells which we have achieved now, I think in three different um, uh, batteries of tests, um, some at an institute and some in a commercial provider. So we're very confident on, on the quality of the data. We, so, now, we now have to find a way to get into man. <laughs> well, that's the next step, isn't it? But it sounds like you've got a, a, a lot on uh, going on at the moment and uh, lots of news flow coming up. Dr. Roger Aston, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. I hope that you get back to Melbourne at some point, but the wonders of technology means everything can keep going regardless of where we are these days. Thanks for chatting to us today. Gary, it's a pleasure. Thank you.